vectors application force now as you know you can add vectors and when you add vectors you get a resultant vector for example if you have a vector like this in one direction let's say vector u and then a vector v then you can add them up by making a parallelogram which results into a resultant vector now on the other hand a vector can actually be resolved into its components if we are given this vector we can say this vector can be represented as sum of two components right the two sides of your parallelogram so that is what we are trying to understand now and it is a vector can be resolved in two new vectors called components so if we take this vector then we can resolve it into vector a and b where they will add up to form the given vector so these vectors a and b are the components of the original vector that is what we are trying to understand here with this example so it says a vector can be resolved into new vectors called components where original vector is sum of its components right normally the components are parallel to x and y axis but not always right so when it is parallel to x and y axis then we call them rectangular components let me add that here so what we're trying to say here is that if there is a vector it can be resolved into two components and the sum of those two components is same as the original vector right like we saw here we have this vector and we can resolve it into two components like one and two right so some of these two gives us the original vector so that is what we're trying to understand a component is so a vector can have components which add up to give you the original vector so that is a concept now this is a very important concept which we use in solving problems related to force so here are two examples one is resolve a force of 100 newtons whose direction is from east 30 degrees north into components along x and y axis right so let me just sketch this for you and then you do the needful to resolve it now what we are saying is that this is let us say a coordinate system and we have a force of 100 newtons which is from east 30 degrees north so let's say this is 30 degrees north from east and it is 100 newtons right so let's say this line represents 100 newtons correct so if this represents 100 newtons then how can you resolve this into its x and y components now this is x-axis so if you draw a perpendicular here then this component is the x component and that component going upwards is the y component which is parallel to y axis so this force of 100 newton can be seen as a combination of horizontal component and vertical component now horizontal component is along the x axis and the vertical component is along the y axis now, you can use trigonometric ratios to calculate what horizontal component will be so if this angle is 30 degrees then the horizontal component will be 100 cos of 30 correct so we can write the force along the horizontal direction will be how much 100 is the force right so 100 into cos of 30 degrees and the vertical component is a force fy y representing the vertical component will be 100 times sine of 30 so you can see resolving a force into components parallel to x and y axis is kind of simpler right so you can use trigonometric rules and find correct so you know cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse right and therefore adjacent side let us say fx let me write more fx so you know cos of 30 degrees 
is equals to fx over 100, right? fx is the component of force along x direction. So f of x is equals to 100 times cos of 30 degrees, right? That is how we get our result. So application of our trigonometric ratios and the right triangle helps us to find the components of a force along x and y direction. And these are referred to as rectangular components. So if we say resolve force of 100 newtons in this direction into rectangular components, it means same as along x and y axis. Okay. So, so this is how we'll do it. So you can use your calculator and calculate 100 cos 30 and 100 sin 30 to get these two values. Similarly, we have the next question, which is resolve a force of 40 Newton at 240 degrees. So these are kind of practice questions for you so that you can get started with forces. Now here, the force is 40 Newtons at 240 degrees. That means what? Is the bearing angle from north. So that you have to measure from north, 240 degrees, right? So this is 270, this is 180. 240 is 30 less than 270. So that is your 240 and this angle will be, so let's write like this first. So this angle is 240 because bearing angle is measured from north clockwise. So that is 240 degrees. And this angle therefore, the acute angle is 30 degrees. Now, the length of this arrow indicates 40 newtons, the magnitude, right? So what are the components of this force? We can say the x component will be how much? Cosine of 30. So 40 times cos of 30. Now since this is negative x direction, if you write as combination, it will be minus of i, right? And the y component was going downwards, correct? Which will be? It is opposite side of this right triangle and therefore it will be 40 sine of 30 degrees. And the direction is negative since it's going down j. So you can write your force which is, let's say f, is equals to this in component form. And that is a force of 40 newtons at 240 degrees. So this is this force which could be written like this in component forms. Correct? So from here you can see that always horizontal component is what? Is cosine of the force, right? So it is f times cos of theta. Whatever the force given force is, the angle which it makes with the horizontal. Normally, in Cartesian coordinates, we always take angle as the principal angle, anti-clockwise from positive x-axis, right? So theta is a principal angle. And the vertical component will be f of sine theta. So in all the examples here also you saw that we get horizontal components as f of cos theta and vertical component as f of sine theta. Well, if you use calculator, then you're going to get exact answer. Uh, what I'm trying to say is including the sine. So, so from here, if you see, if you have to see, measure it with the angle, then you have to place clockwise angle because we're talking about principal angle. So what is the principal angle here? The principal angle here is 180 plus 30. So the principal angle theta in this particular case is 180 plus 30, which is 210 degrees, right? So if you write the f force of 40 Newtons, 40 cos of 210 degrees, you will get negative, right? Because cosine is negative in this quadrant. Similarly, sine of 210 degrees will also give you negative value, correct? So, you will get exact, the correct answer, what I'm trying to say, using calculator with the angle theta. But remember, 
theta should be the principal angle taken correct so what we learned here is that a force when it is represented into its rectangular component forms then its horizontal component is the co cosine of that force and the vertical component is the sine of that force where theta is the principal angle so that is kind of important to understand and this is going to help us to solve many problems relating to force. I hope you appreciate it. Thank you.